Yes, we're here with the 2020 ACC Defensive Player of the Year and one of the newest members of the New York Liberty, Kylie Shook. Kylie, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it too. Not a problem. And, you know, your journey starts in Colorado and it starts playing against boys in boys league. So how old were you when you started playing against the boys and what was that experience like for you? I would probably say third grade and like we had like the little baby rims that go like on the lower and like I always remember I used to like hit it and like the rest would be like I'm like ooh, my bad. I'm like oh and then um yeah so that's probably where I started playing with boys and then the older I got I just kept playing with boys. Your sophomore and junior year in high school uh you ran into some injury problems and then when you went into your senior year it was said that your high school coach Jeff Beatty he, he took you aside and gave you a talk, and it led to you being a McDonald's All-American. So what was it about Coach Beatty that, that turned everything around in your senior year? Um, I would just say all throughout my high school career, he was like, you have so much potential. And then him and my dad would have, like, discussions off the scene and then kind of, like, collaborate. So they'd both be telling me the same things. So I guess my senior year, I just finally realized, like, it's it's possible and um, the more opportunities you hear about, the more you want to accomplish them. So when he like pulled me aside, him and my dad, and they were like, you have the possibility to do this. So I was like, okay, like I can do it. So if I want to do it, I need to put my mind to it and work towards it. How, how cool is it? Because I, I went through this too with my dad, because the, the practice didn't end when practice ended. Because <laughs> when we got in the car, the ride home, it was more practice with your second coach. So how, how influential was your dad along your journey? Bro, oh, he was crazy. I mean, he was there through every moment, whether it was before. Before games, we'd have pet game, pet game pre-talk and all that stuff. And then after games, he'd be like, yep, this is what you did. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> but no, it, it never stopped. Like, he definitely pushed me to be the best that I could be. And that's probably half the reason why I am where I am, because my whole high school career, he – kind of established what I need to do so when I got to college I was like it's just the same routine and you get to college and you have a pretty awesome college coach and Jeff Walls at, at Louisville so how did he continue that process and get you to the next level uh he's a he's a very hard coach I mean not hard to work with or anything like that but he's that's the whole reason I went to Louisville because I know that he would make me the best that I could be and I know like playing at that level you have to play the best that you can which is why I sat the bench for two years, because I didn't get it. So, I mean, in order to be the best, you have to train the best. You have to really focus. And I think that he pushed me to get there, which is what I wanted. I mean, the journey wasn't easy, but he stuck by my side and he was hard on me. Like, he saw potential that I didn't see myself. So, it was, it was good. It, it plays with your mind when you know you have the ability and you're, you're basically locked on the bench. How, how much did that drive you to get to where you were later in your career at Louisville? A lot. I mean, everybody goes through ups and downs, wanting to give up and then getting mad, like, why am I here? Why am I this? But I think he did a really good job at explaining to me, like, what I needed to do. Although at the time I was like, like, I'm doing it. Like, why am I sitting on the bench? Like, I don't get it. So I think it just took growth and learning and confidence and watching the other players, the best players ahead of me seeing what they're doing so um yeah it was a journey but it got me where I am because uh I buckled down like this I wanted to make it to the WNBA this level and in order to do that I can't sit the bench I can't take summers off and that's what I did so <laughs> <laughs> how about all right you brought up the WNBA and the New York Liberty so let's go back to draft night first and foremost when your name is called what's that moment like for you and your family it just seemed unreal. I was like, what? Like, well, first Jazz called me before I even saw it on the TV. I was like, congratulations. She's like, no, you. I'm like, huh? <laughs> and then we're all jumping and screaming. It just felt unreal. Like, I didn't expect to go that early, and I'm so thankful I did. And to the team I wanted to go to, because, like, I love the coaches, and my teammates are already there. So it's just like a dream come true. So Jasmine Jones gets drafted right before you at 12. She's the last pick of the first round. You're the first pick of the second round. And already on the team from Louisville is Asia Durr. So going into this whole process, you have to be uber comfortable to have so many familiar faces around you. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I have my two teammates. And then on top of that, um, other people in the league, like in the ACC, like Jocelyn and 
well, Sabrina, I, I know Sabrina from AAU and all that stuff. And then uh, Odom, like we've all played with each other for four years. We all know how we play. And then Odom, I went to, I actually roomed with her at McDonald's. So it's kind of comfortable because like I'm, I know somewhat about all of these people. Yeah, it, it, sometimes people say familiarity breeds contempt, but it's just the exact opposite with yeah. the way you know everybody here. How important is that to have a familiarity with the people that you're going to play at the professional level? I would say it's really important. I mean, because the more comfortable you are, the more able you are to feel comfortable to talk to them and speak and open up. So um, instead of being the way I kind of am and timid and like, oh, like, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Like, I'll go there and be semi-comfortable. And on top of that, we're already having, like, calls with other teammates. So I'm already getting comfortable in that aspect, too. You, you brought up the Liberty coaching staff, and you said you hit it off with them. What was it about uh, Walt and his staff that you hit it off with them? Um, I would say probably just feeling comfortable um, in what he talked about, like, how, the, how he wants to play the team, how he wants me to play, like, and how it's a process. Like, he's very upfront, straightforward, um, doesn't sugarcoat. And I like that about coaches. Um, he also cares, like, you can tell that the coaching staff really cares about the players and cares about, like, the small details and the things that I focus on when I'm looking at basketball. And I kind of feel like the way they coach is similar to the way Walls coaches. So um, just how, like, they look at details and, like, the minor things and coach you through them. So um, that really, like, stood out. So I was like, okay, like, yeah. Be good. <laughs> All right. Um, back on February 13th against fourth ranked NC State, you had 10 points, 10 boards, seven blocks, <laughs> and you held Alyssa Kinane to one for 12 from the floor. So, having said that, playing such at a high level against a highly ranked team, what could Liberty fans expect from you when they see you play? Um, I would say I really focus on both sides of the court. Um, I know some people really just focus on the offensive end, but I love defense and I take pride in my defense. So um, definitely look out for that. Hopefully I'll be out there <laughs> doing what I did in college. But um, no, I'm just really going to try to make an impact on both in, um, both sides of the floor and do what's best for my team and kind of get into the new process. And the WNBA is definitely a higher pace. So get used to that. Asia Durr called you on draft night, too. Did she give you any uh, words of wisdom about coming <laughs> to the league? No, she was just like, congratulations, like, because she knew my process. She's like my go-to person when I was struggling. Um, so she was like, you did it. Like, be proud. She's like, I can't wait to see you. Um, I miss you. She's like, but just, you know, be ready. I mean, it's a whole different level. It's a whole different game. <clears throat> now, besides prepping for the upcoming season, are there any hobbies? Are there any books? Are there any uh, shows that you're binging? What are you doing in your free time if you have some? Oh, so much free time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm watch, uh, I'm watching All American. So I haven't got through that. But um, hiking a lot, working out. I'm working out like three times a day. I'm just bored. I'm like, okay, next video. <laughs> but um, I'm actually going camping with my dad. Uh, for Memorial Day weekend, so that should be fun. Um, but yeah, mainly just hiking, working out, reading books, <laughs> being how about, bored. How about some uh, favorite food? Anything you're cooking up uh, while you're in quarantine like everybody else? Uh, I am cooking, so that's a start. But <laughs> no, I have time to. <laughs> but no, my favorite food is crab and prime rib, and I don't know how to cook those, so. Oof. <laughs> well, we'll we'll have to do a cooking show. I already have Zowie B on board. I have uh, Rashonda Gray on board as well. So maybe we'll all get together and crab will be on the menu. We'll have to hook that up. Yeah, Rashonda's already sending me videos about my eyebrows. We were talking <laughs> about them. I said I'm I'm shaving them all off. <laughs> not doing me good. <laughs> Kylie, I cannot wait to see you in a New York Liberty uniform. I can't wait to see us start playing basketball again. Thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.